time for the visit with the person of high strangeness. Um, this is the middle of the summer, usually the time when we start our travel shows. And um, so I thought it would be really appropriate to start you off with something in Olympia, Washington. Uh, because normally, the further we go away from home, the more we look for things that's familiar. And um, then when I go and visit the friends in the west of the country, um, I bring, all back, bring back all this footage to Olympia, and then, um, and then when I get to go somewhere, then people say, well, what did you bring us? And so today, we're going to take you to um, the Flight Museum in Olympia, Washington. Now, before we get to this, I want to show you um, a friend of mine sent this. This is a, uh, a new crop circle that came in in 2003. I don't know the date. Oh, on the 3rd of July in Rockville uh, in Solano County in California. And so I haven't found it on the crop circle connector. And so I thought I'll share it with you uh, this way in case they have overlooked the United States again because they have all the things from uh, the UK on there. And so I haven't said all that, so we've been to um, the crop circle in California. And I guess I'm going to go introduce my guest now. He's a young man that I, oops, that I met at the museum. And so I would like for you to meet um, Derek Benner. Benner. Did I say Very that close, right? yes. Very close. You, I have to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule there. Thank you for having me. You know, we've been doing this three times already. Yep, three times. And we Three times a charm. That's what it is. Yeah, <laughs> so we, we just had to cancel for what, whatever reason. Now, I want to lead up um, to, we have a clip that I brought. OK. Um, my niece and her family was visiting right after uh, Christmas. I remember. And so the weather was kind of icky. And uh, unlike today, it's, what, 98 degrees? Something yeah. like that. It's very warm. Yeah. It was cold, and so we was looking for something to do. And even though I've been here for 37 years, uh, and I drive by the museum every day. Yeah, we hear a lot of that. Yeah, and so uh, so we said, well, let's just try the museum. And so I came in there, and you allowed me to film. And I kind of went in what, what, I, what you would call double blind, because um, at the time, there wasn't anyone there to show me around. So you might find it interesting how I narrated this yes, homemade like clip it. here. See yeah. what you've done. And so, so we're going to talk till you get ready for, for the clip here. That's my homemade movie that I hadn't planned on sharing uh, about the Flight Museum here. Yeah. But it was so interesting. I remember we were quite busy that day. Busy. That's why we couldn't uh, yeah. help you out as much as we'd like to. Yeah, and then there were helicopters coming in, and it, it was so All miserable. All sorts of activity. Yeah. Yes. So when, whenever we get to it, we can play that clip with the audio. And so you can see what it is that I saw the first time I went to, to the flight museum. Oh, oh, there we are. In 11 <laughs> to 5. Yeah. Um, I guess seven days a week. At the end of the souvenirs, uh, meet you almost right away. Um, we paid our entrance fee and was advised not to pass the aircraft. And uh, so we're just going to go right to here and see what they have. Uh, your name is? Derek. Derek. And you're the attendant here? I'm the deputy director of the museum. Oh, so got pretty high in the, in the train, our lucky day, yes. huh? <laughs> Would you be nice enough to tell me a little bit about the museum? Sure. We'll be five years old uh, coming up this summer. Mm -hmm. We. Um, house a pretty rare variety of aircraft, uh, most of which are flying. We encompass a collection that ranges from uh, pre-World War II aviation all the way up to uh, modern day. We've got a couple of uh, supersonic jet interceptors outside. Uh -huh. And uh, Let me stop you for just a minute. Yeah. A little rock and roll thrown in here, so yes, please continue. Thank you. Um, our biggest event is our Gathering of Warbirds. We have that uh, coming up uh, June uh, 13 through 16. Mm -hmm. It's over Father's Day weekend, and it's our largest uh, event, and uh, it's pretty much the uh, the air, only air show uh, for the uh, three-county region. And we have all of our aircraft outside, and uh, we do fly them. And we also host approximately 50 other visiting Warbird aircraft. Mm -hmm. So um, from what we can determine now, we're the largest uh, Warbird show in the Pacific Northwest, and uh, been getting bigger and bigger every year. I live right up the street, so... I can always hear when you have some activity you here. We hear you flying over, yeah. 
Well, and then I'm going to just take everybody on a tour. Thank you for Sounds your... Sounds good. Did we leave out anything? Um, well, Because I've never been here before, so I've got the hours. We're open seven days a week, 11 to 5. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we host um, special occasions. The mm -hmm. hangar is available for facility rental. Mm -hmm. We um, do tours for, um, for youth schools and uh, mm -hmm. Cub Scouts. We do quite a bit of those. And um, we have a couple of mobile exhibits in the hangar. We've got a T-28 that we take around to parades and schools, and we're working on a new one, which is our... Uh, and uh, we'll be restoring that. that. Oh, yeah. That's the one that flew into uh, Vietnam, huh? That is right. And yeah. We'll make that look brand new again, and we'll bring it on the, uh, the parade circuit. Mm -hmm. Have kids climb all over it. Cool. And then this is also in the entrance. And... Um, all kinds of different aircrafts. In a hundred years, you might have an AWAC here, huh? Maybe. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe 20. Maybe 20, maybe yeah. 20 years. So, and then here's books. They are for sale, I take it? Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go into the hangar and see what we got here. Thank you. You're welcome. That's white screen here. I'm assuming that'll tell you all about the aircraft by video. So I'm going to swing around here. And like you said, they're all operational. And this is a, a silver in so you can see what that is. A side winder. A side winder. I'm just going to get closer so you can read, so you can read the whole thing. These are the type of jeeps I remember uh, growing up in Europe when they, when they used to let us pass the street as we were going to school. And then like the gentleman said, here's this helicopter that they're going to restore. It's going to get noisy here in a minute because this video is running. So I think what's going to happen here, I will just be quiet and just show you different things. Through the inside of the helicopter, I don't know how many people it holds. Here's a display of letters of appreciation and things like that. And um, in the back here you have a token. These are different awards. That were donated, I'm assuming. And the token here, I'm gonna step back a little bit. It's a rescue, a rescue plane. Okay. Young man up there. Checking it out. It's a two-seater. And because of the light, I don't know if you can see this. It's a Mitsubishi A6M2 Zero Zen Model 21. And this is a replica. And here we have what appears to be an engine. Here. Doesn't indicate, but I would think that's part of an airplane, a glider or something hanging up on the ceiling. This is Sky Raider, a Douglas Sky Raider. And then an engine. I'm assuming that's the engine that goes into um, that goes into this plane. And it says here that the mission was the Korean War, and they also flew them in Vietnam. Mighty Marines. Now that I'm closer, it's a lot bigger than I first thought. Actually, somewhat bigger than my viewfinder will show you. I'll step back and get back to this one. It's all painted, so they all have different colors. And like I said, there's a video plane that explains the different functions of the plane. This is an American Beauty. If I can bring that in for you here. Um, but these are, this one is from World War II. 
a P51D and it only had two 92 gallon international wind t uh, tanks. That's not a lot. My RV has 60. So I don't think they went very far actually. No, not true. 489 gallon total capacity. So they went a little further than I did. <laughs> a different view of this plane. Something was landing outside, you can hear that. See what it is. The helicopter, that's what you're hearing. Coming down. And it's raining. And then here are some steps on the runway. So it doesn't look like they are in operation. And here's some more. like a shark. How cool. From here airport is a flight from all the to Spokane. It's the only thing running right now. Here we have a camouflage net to give it that military appearance. And up here we have an, have an, an Ava. It's as close as I can get for you. the 13th Air Force Bomber Group. Here's a case of maps and uh, looks like maps. And then over here, and then here this is an FG-1D that went to Korea find Indonesia and Algeria, Latin America, and it flies about 425 miles at 20,000 feet. And this is a picture right here. This is a display of instruments in different casings. And helmets and from from Japan. I would assume some probably come from just from the Pacific Sea area. So therefore, I would assume some of that survived Pearl Harbor. And then up here, I guess that's how they uh, <laughs> they had a flat tire. You could always pump it. And then I'm just going to swing this around. These are all models, as far as you can see. It goes all the way down the hall here. Lots of models of airplanes. In pictures. Pictures of pilots with big smiles, very proud. And here's a whole wall full of airplanes. Long ways here. Here are more instruments. The tool belt. Metals. Goggles. more models. Different photographs. Let me see if I can zero in on these photos for you. All photographs. And of course, I can't see that far. I don't believe there is a single description of anything here. So we'll just take a look at the whole photo. Here's another collage of airplanes.
Actually, it's no tag on this, but it, this is either a missile or a bomb. Pretty good size. It's very rusted. Let's see if I bring it in a little closer. Yeah, models of the AVAX. I think they called AVAX. Sometimes we mistake them for your horse. <laughs> kind of look like a in the sky I guess you could mistake this for your phone this would be a map of some of the of some of the missions that they they flew Philippines Manila Bay and, uh, and down below here are different patches I'm going to give you a straight across view. And we have some visitors here from Germany. So they have a few things. And uh, it's probably fun to bring your children here. Another canister. seat looks real beat up. I'm assuming it's really old. Here's another one. Give you a full view here. This is a drawing, but it also has a piece of metal that I'm assuming came off the plane. It is not descriptive, and unfortunately there is no guide to explain anything to us. That's kind of sad, but that's okay, you'll have fun anyway. And then this is showing you to the facility from the other side. I think that's pretty good size. And I spotted some, some Japanese writing on this one right there. And here again is that helicopter that they are restoring. When the gentleman told us about when we first came in here. And here's the pilot, keeping watch. Seth is a GAU-4 Vulcan Canyon. Look at the size of those bullets. My. It might be well to walk around several times because I did miss quite a bit the first time around. Right, to look down the barrel of the canyon. Look at that. Wow. Wow. And then here. We have another bomb. Yeah, this is the Sinclair aircraft gas pump from a different angle. This was filmed right, uh, right after New Year, so of course Santa uh, was still present in, the, in his, <laughs> his Jeep. I don't know what happened to his reindeer, but I guess aircraft was faster for him. Here's a, a picture, a photograph of two pilots. And then, here they are. It says 56 years later. Must have been exciting for them to come back and take another picture. And just signed up here. That's Lieutenant Bullock. And this is the pilot I told you earlier. 
keeping much, I suppose. And this is the mission statement from the museum. The Olympic Flight Museum is a non-profit organization dedicated to the preservation and flying of vintage aircraft. The museum was founded with the goal of bringing people together to relieve, recollect, and learn about aviation history. Our mission is to deliver the sights, sounds, smells, and excitement of flight to every museum visitor. Photographs of my pilot. I really like this picture. The reflection you see in the back is of the big screen that is running. And so it's reflecting into the glass here. I think it's really kind of cool. <laughs> kind of a cool picture here. And here we have some round here. The next case has boots. This pilot had small feet. More instruments. Some of them look pretty banged up, actually. Here's that screen that the documentary runs just about all the time, and as you can hear it in the background. They allow you to go right up to the plane, even though you're not allowed to touch them. But you can get a really good look at things. I have one more overview of the hangar. And we pretty much run out of things now. So, I hope you enjoyed your tour of the Flight Museum in Olympia, Washington. <laughs> So how did I do on my homemade movie that I sent to Europe? Pretty well. Pretty well. Yes. Unfortunately, you caught us right after a big Christmas or holiday party. Yeah, it was and a crazy time. And we took a time. lot of airplanes out of the hangar. Mm -hmm. That's why you had that big hole there with nothing in it. Oh, you mean I missed some of them? Oh, yes. I have to come back. You'll have to come back, you mm -hmm. bet. Uh, we've got about uh, 24 aircraft in our collection, and we only had about six in that hangar at that time. Really? Yes. I'm going to stop here for a minute uh, and talk to you about you as a person so I can I want to make a connection how okay. we got from here to here and what you're gonna uh, see behind us is that great air show that you well let's talk about the day to the air shows okay. before I talk to you for you well a big show was a gathering of warbirds and that mm -hmm. was back in June during Father's Day weekend June 13th that's every year now every year you mm -hmm. bet every Father's Day weekend mm -hmm. and that is the uh, the biggest event and the biggest fundraiser uh, for the museum mm -hmm. And we do have a, a smaller air show coming up uh, at the end of the summer, September 27 and 28. Oh, I'm gone, so I don't oh, have to worry shucks. about. <laughs> I don't have to worry about something crashing on my head. But yeah. if you don't mind me plugging the show while I'm on, uh, on the TV here, but um, it's a smaller scale show, mm -hmm. but uh, it is an air show. It is the last uh, event um, of the summer. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have all our aircraft out flying, and again. Um, We'll be hosting about uh, 20 to 30 visiting uh, vintage aircraft as well. Yeah, so if, you know, because uh, those trees that, that you see uh, in the back there, I live right behind there. And, okay. and so, I've so only, you hear us? Yeah, so, so I've only been in Tomwater a very short time. And so we used to hear these planes, but I didn't know what they were. And now that I know what they look like, okay. um, it's, it's, yeah. uh, it's pretty amazing because they go right over my house. They do, yeah. That yeah. Uh, whole area there around the airport is a mm -hmm. uh, pretty uh, heavily uh, heavy traffic pattern for the aircraft. Yeah. Now you are. You, where did you originate? Uh, um, actually, I'm I'm from Washington. I'm a native. You are native? Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, my uh, I had a military family. They moved us around the country. Yeah, that's how uh, I got here too. Right. Yeah, Fort Lewis. Yeah. So I went to school here, um, mm -hmm. Olympia High School graduate. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to um, South Dakota State Community College and Evergreen State College. I mm -hmm. uh, was hired by a small, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, Evergreen, here's that magic word again. A lot of the, um, a lot of the uh, viewers in Texas, because we always talk about the Evergreen, hmm. so they're getting real familiar with that. Oh, how about that? With, with that school. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to put that in there. Good, good. 
And uh, after uh, I left Evergreen, I got hired at the airport for a small uh, aviation firm. Mm -hmm. So, so do, did you have a love for airplanes? Or oh, just I did. Yes. did My you? dad is a retired uh, Army pilot. Uh -huh. And helps. he's the one who uh, uh, bit me with the aviation bug there and uh, uh -huh. got me interested in, in aviation, more specifically uh, uh, Warbirds uh, mm -hmm. military aircraft. And um, unfortunately, while I was working at this small firm, um, they ran out of work and uh, I was subsequently laid off. But uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, know some people at the Olympic mm -hmm. Flight Museum, and they uh, matured to a level where they needed to hire on another employee. Mm -hmm. And uh, I fell in at the right time there mm -hmm. as a volunteer coordinator and, uh, and hangar manager. And I've been with them since uh, 2000. 2000, yeah. Yes. Uh, no, I, I, I don't know. The people, we talk about these things sometimes. Some circumstances get kind of bad for us, and then we accidentally fall into a situation where, where our passion becomes our job. Yep. Is that what happened and I, to you? And I'd like to think that everything happens for a reason, it too. Does. Because if that, uh, if that didn't happen, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. so, so you, instead of a job, uh, would you call it a career now? What would I choose? As, well, I would ultimately be in aviation in, in some way or another. Uh -huh. um, right now, I'm at the museum um, while I'm also going back to school. Mm -hmm. After I got uh, got the axe at one company, mm -hmm. I decided to put myself back through school, and um, I'll be graduating at the end of August with a master's degree mm -hmm. in uh, aeronautical science. Yeah. And we'll see uh, where I go from there. See what happens, yes. yeah. Uh, we just spent time with uh, Dr. Gilbert Jordan. He worked in the propulsion systems of, uh, wow. of the big planes, and uh, when, when I bring this show, I'll drop you off a copy. Great. Yeah, so we got we got we flying high here for for the next few weeks. Actually, we're going to take you on a trip to meet so many other friends uh, that's involved in things like that. Uh, now, the museum runs on, do, on donations only. Um, primarily, yes. Primarily. Uh, we are a five hundred one c three nonprofit mm -hmm. organization. We are a publicly supported uh, educational and uh, mm -hmm. aircraft preservation institution, if you will, here at the mm -hmm. uh, at the Olympia Regional Airport. So, so the Olympia Brewery, uh, they they put out a lot of money for nonprofits like that. Did well, that well, hurt they, you at all? Um, no, actually, we we never approached the brewery oh. uh, for any any funding. Okay. Um, our major contributors here in Tumwater, actually, the city of Tumwater themselves, oh, yeah. Olympia, the Port of Olympia, mm -hmm. uh, they all help out um, advertising and promoting the museum. Well, Tumwater has their own television they do channel here, so maybe we'll see if we want to show it in in in, in Tumwater. Right. Uh, now, now back to uh, my little clip there. So how did I do um, in my little documentation? You there? did pretty well under pretty the circumstances. Well. Yeah. Uh, you did point out that uh, there was some signage, the, some of the artifacts you looked at, there were no descriptions. Mm -hmm. Again, that was during a very busy moment while mm -hmm. we were moving things around uh, for the Christmas party. And everything was not set up the way it is now. Party. Let's go party. You have parties there? We do have parties there. Yeah. Oh, my. It's a very unique environment. Uh, uh -huh. Uh, depending on uh, the client's wishes, we can, you know, move aircraft out, arrange them to their, to their liking, and uh, we can give them a pretty good show. And we do have a picture down there of an event we did uh, mm -hmm. back uh, two years ago, December seventh, for our Pearl Harbor Remembrance Night. Yeah. And we arranged the aircraft in a, in a neat fashion. We put uh, nice mood lighting up and sandbags, and uh, we made it. We gave the hangar. A uh, South Pacific theme. That's that sound that I hear sometimes. That pot, 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 and I'm saying, oh the no! The unmistakable <laughs> sound of yeah, round engine. Yeah. Uh, and so, when when people rent your facility, do they have to have their own insurance? Well, I, we don't rent the facility. We we offer it to other nonprofit organizations who would like to. So they have to bring their, their own parties. insurance. Yes. Yeah. That that would be. Gee, if somebody slipped and hit a plane, that would. Yes, well, have we, blood insurance. Yes, and all our, all our aircraft are, are insured. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, one of the biggest chunks of the budget. Uh, mm -hmm. Since we are a flying museum, that makes us uh, pretty unique here in the Northwest. Mm -hmm. uh, there are other flight museums, but we're the but only one that flies moving, their yeah. airplanes. And uh, because we do, they have to be insured. Mm -hmm. And again, it's, it's a big chunk of the pie. Yeah, they, I, I saw a lot of, um, uh, it almost looked like some of the, the things that you have, they came out of wrecked or crashed. Uh, crafts and yes. I, I, I've kind of appreciated uh, that you left them the way they were. Some of the aircraft, we when we uh, when we acquire them, we acquire them in, in various stages of, mm -hmm. of disrepair. 
Um, some we get brand new factory showroom condition. Mm -hmm. Others are uh, battle worn but still airworthy. Mm -hmm. And others are just heaps of twisted metal that mm -hmm. uh, uh, we either display just like that as a historical um, yeah. reference. That was my favorite, you know, I think. Or um, if uh, resources permit, uh, we'll have our volunteers rebuild the aircraft mm -hmm. and put it on static display. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the, uh, the, the air show, the tape, the, uh, our background here. That that's a tape that people can purchase. Uh, I've watched it. I was so impressed with the whole thing. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, did you have a chance to come to this year's uh, this year's show? No. Um, I know this list looks like last year's. I was on the road. Uh, no, this was one of the uh, the one that I purchased. Okay. Yeah. Then this is last when, year's when show. I, when I visited, yeah. No, I go on the road to um, to do shoots, you know, out outside the area. And so I usually not here for that event. Okay. But this year I came home a little early because I had a deadline to, to get back here, so I heard it. Yeah. But I had just yeah. driven 5,428 miles, so well, I, didn't, miles. I didn't want to go to the air show. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand. Yeah, yeah but, I, but I heard it. Mm -hmm. Good. So I'm usually gone on Father's Day, and this time I'm gone again. You're gone again. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, next year. Mm hmm. So, so, but you draw quite a few crowds. We do. Um, mm -hmm. This year, actually last year, um, we had about 8,000 in attendance. 8,000? That was last year. This year, we had over 10,000. Oh, my. And so it's steadily increasing. We've had this show now for about, this This was our fifth show. Mm -hmm. And every show, um, it increases between uh, 2,000 to 2,500 people per show. In a few years, we're going to be running out of room. Out of room, yeah. Yes. I guess we have to support it. Be su are the locals, Olympia people, be supportive because that brings a lot of money to the community, it doesn't it? It definitely does, yeah. We bring yeah. a lot of tourists into the region mm -hmm. and uh, they utilize the, the ports facilities mm -hmm. and then they eat and uh, tum water in Olympia establishments. Of course, mm -hmm. they got to spend the night if they're out of town, so it brings a lot of economic revenue into the region. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't remember if uh, when I left, the war was still going. Was the war over at that time? So did you have to change your whole setup because of the new well, war? Well, no, no, so it was still going on, unfortunately, because uh, yeah. we'd like to attract some uh, actual yeah. current issue military hardware to the yeah. show. And unfortunately, everything was tasked out uh, during the war. Right. They're out, all out fighting, so they couldn't come mm -hmm. and uh, participate. But uh, next year, uh, we're expecting uh, quite a bit of participation by the, by the government. Mm -hmm. Well, we were right outside of Fort Meade, and the bombers was coming in. Uh, from 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 Iraq, and they were just huge airplanes. And um, they, uh, one of the people there told us that most uh, most of the bombers will be stationed in Europe, in Slovakia and Hungary. And uh, but that wouldn't have anything to do with you, and no, it probably doesn't. Us. But no. it, I just <laughs> reminisced here. What would you like to see happen here in the next few years? Well, let's see. Our collection is uh, steadily growing. Mm -hmm. um, we are we've been out of space now for the museum for the last about two years. Mm -hmm. uh, we operate out of 11,000 square foot facility, mm -hmm. and uh, only has enough room to display about seven aircraft at mm -hmm. a time. Uh, we do have several storage hangars on the airport that we keep the airplanes in mm -hmm. when they're not in the main exhibition hangar, and we we rotate them through mm -hmm. every two or uh, two or three weeks. So repeat visitors get a chance to see something new. Um, in the next two, three years, I would uh, like to see, and I think uh, it may happen, uh, a bigger facility, mm -hmm. a singular facility where the entire collection can be put on display and accessible to the public. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the other schools bring in the children for hands-on or things like that? Yes, maybe? yes they do. Mm -hmm. uh, we accommodate about uh, two to three tours a week now. A week? A oh, week, yeah. yes. And uh, we're becoming more and more popular. And as the word spreads, um, mm -hmm. the frequency of tours just keeps going up, up, up. Uh, yes, you know, like, like I said in the very beginning there, uh, people enjoy travel trolls. And then you go away, and this is, you know, you go away and then, um, like I was in Montana and I found a lady from Lacey, I got all excited, <laughs> you know. So when you go, you look for things that you're familiar with. Exactly. And then, yeah. then I, we sit here for years and years, and. Unless we have tourists pointing it out, we don't know what's here. That's right, and that, yeah. that's one of our, our stumbling blocks at the museum. We've mm -hmm. been there for five years, and we still get people through the door saying, I lived here all my life, yeah. I didn't know you were here. 
Yeah. Um, but that's changing. Mm -hmm. uh, just last year, we finally got uh, signs out there on Interstate mm -hmm. 5. And that, oh, yeah, that is bringing else. people into the museum. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, during the summer times, the summer is our flying season. Mm -hmm. um, we actually get our airplanes up in the air. We fly over the region uh, to promote, say, hey, mm -hmm. look up, we're here. Yeah, we can hear you. Yep. Yeah, we hear you. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, did you have any damage during the earthquake? No, we didn't. Lucky uh, you. Thank goodness, yeah. We keep all our aircraft uh, chalked in the hangar. Mm -hmm. And what chalk means we put little wooden blocks in front and behind the main mm -hmm. wheels, the landing gear there, so they don't roll back and forth. And um, our uh, executive director was at the hangar during mm -hmm. the earthquake, and that place was rolling. And if the aircraft were not uh, chalked up, they probably would have rolled and bunched all together against uh, against the wall. It would have been... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's disastrous. Well, yes, my disastrous. house was chalked, and it didn't save it. I fell in the hole. Oh, boy. <laughs> so I guess you were just lucky. Yes, we were. Mm -hmm. And so the oldest plane you have is how old? The oldest plane we have, oh, I would say it's about almost 70 years old 70 now. Years yeah, it's old. old uh, N3N uh, biplane. It's a training aircraft, and you had a picture of it there in mm -hmm. the, uh, in the video. It's the yellow biplane. And that was built um, prior to World War II as mm -hmm. a uh, primary pilot trainer mm -hmm. for prospective pilots or military pilots. The reason I recognized the helicopter when I first came to the United States, that was during the Vietnam War, and um, my husband was in the military. And I remember they had wrapped them all up, uh, looked like they were in a cast, and mm -hmm. then they would chip them. And, yep, that's, and that's why I recognized that helicopter. Yeah, it's a special preservative. They can spray on it or, or wrap that's They what cocoon it is. the helicopters. So when it's uh, going over the ocean on their voyage, um, the, me the metal is not subject to, uh, to any corrosion. It keeps well, all the salt mist down. That's why they cocoon them up for transport. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I, I didn't know that, that that's all interesting. Uh, oh, it must take quite a bit to load a helicopter on an airplane anyway. And oh, it does. Yeah, yeah. so. Uh, now, McCord Air Force Base has air shows. They do. Uh, Actually, uh, they usually have one big event. Mm -hmm. um, and that uh, was a are they in the exchangeable? You take your planes there also? Yes, as a matter of fact, did? we did this year, and that was about mm -hmm. what, two or three weeks ago. Oh, yeah. And we took a couple of our aircraft up there to put mm -hmm. on display. Unfortunately, Mother Nature did not uh, cooperate. It was, uh, it, the show was rained out. Uh, rained out. It, well, it hasn't rained since I've been <laughs> home. This was uh, back in, I believe, uh, July 12th and 13th. Uh, July 13th, the Sunday. Was it? And it was a uh, pretty violent uh, weather day. Heavy rains. They managed to do a little flying up there, but uh, mm -hmm. for the most part, uh, it was pretty miserable, unfortunately. So now, um, I have a friend whose husband is a pilot, and we were talking about that. Um, the pilots have to take a physical every year. Oh, yes. Yeah. And then the other day, a plane crashed uh, here somewhere, and the pilot was 82 years old. So I want to go there for a minute. Okay. Um, are these some of the original pilots, or are the young people stepping up to the plate? Well, of course, you know, as the years go by, the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the older pilots, they, they get older, mm -hmm. and they reach a level where uh, they can't, they can't qualify for a medical certificate anymore. Yeah. And that's where the, the younger crowd steps in. Mm -hmm. Uh, they appreciate the need to keep these historic uh, aircraft flying, mm -hmm. and uh, they get checked out and certified uh, by the FAA to keep these birds flying. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, really, that's uh, really encouraging. It does. You know, mm -hmm. it keeps the uh, keeps the memory of both the aircraft and the veteran aviators alive. Yeah. I I don't remember if there was you or no. There was somebody else was telling me a story. I think on the way home about their father was in the was in the military and uh, something happened to him and that's one of the reasons that he wanted to, am I the right story? Yeah, I think I am. Um, that's why he had developed this passion for these planes to keep up the father's memory. So that's right. was, was it you? No, that was not me. Was no. Okay. Um, so, so funding comes in pretty steady, or are you? Well, well not steady. Uh, mm -hmm. We uh, do have uh, museum memberships that are available. Memberships? We have memberships. And they start at uh, $40, and that's mm -hmm. good for a whole year. Mm -hmm. um, you get free, unlimited access to the museum mm -hmm. admission for, uh, for the member and his immediate uh, family. Mm -hmm. uh, you get a subscription to our exclusive uh, newsletter. Uh -huh. You get uh, discounts in the gift store and mm -hmm. uh, free admission to uh, certain museum events. The, gi uh, the gift shop is really, really nice. Yes. And uh, as another added bonus of being a member, you uh, also uh, qualify 
uh, are eligible to be a volunteer at the museum and actually work on the airplanes. I have seven grandchildren, so if I get a membership, I make out like abandoned. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Volunteer. So you are looking for volunteers and stuff. Like we do. Yes. Yeah. Once you become yeah. a member, then uh, upon your request, we can give you a, an application to become a volunteer, mm -hmm. and then that goes to committee and uh, it goes from there. Mm -hmm. And and so when you do have, I take it when you do have the shows, every all the volunteers they direct the traffic. Oh, and the we couldn't do the shows without the volunteers. Uh -huh. I mean, ninety percent uh, is their effort. Yeah. Um, this this last air show, uh, our biggest yet. And again, uh, it was um, primarily due to their their efforts yeah. that the show was uh, the huge success that it was. Yeah. Uh, well, in uh, uh, well, for the friends that don't live here, Olympia, Lacey, and Tom Water, they were originally three different places, but now with uh, the way they're building the houses, oh, well, let's see, uh, Lacey was the one that is. Furthest north, L Lacey, That's right. yeah. Olympia, and Tomwater. So I would think there are several miles between the two. But now the way Lacey is building and yep. Tomwater is building, they are meeting in the east. That's right. You know, if it weren't for the signs, you wouldn't know where one city stops and the other one and begins. And the other one ends, yeah. yes. And so we saw it in a tri city type, in almost a tri city yes. environment. Um, but I noticed that in, in Tomwater, they're building new hotels and things. They are, mm -hmm. yes. And so I, I think we, um, we're just grateful that there are things that, you know, benefit the community like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have children? No, I do not. I'm you single. You do not? Mm -hmm. So suppose you had children. Um, uh, they would be fans of aviation. I'd get them in airplanes as, uh, as soon as they mm -hmm. could, or as soon as I could. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a uh, fantastic and uh, tremendously rewarding hobby. Mm -hmm. Just. Uh, uh, not only are the, the technological and, and, and science connotations, uh, there's also the historic aspect the historic to it. It's aspect. very appealing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, uh, we have there is, uh, several hobby shops in town. We do. And they have such a collection uh, of airplanes. The reason I'm mentioning that after we came from the museum, the, the, the children uh, that came from Europe, they all wanted model airplanes. Okay. Great. And so we located some, some, some shops. And then uh, your mechanics are volunteers also? We have uh, one full-time mechanic, mm -hmm. and he's supplemented by the volunteers mm -hmm. when he needs assistance, and that's uh, more often than not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how many days out of the year? Yeah, that, that's, a, yeah, that's a trick question here. Well, so as far as our flying season goes? Considering <laughs> that we're in Washington State, yeah, we get pretty turbulent. We do, yeah. We, uh, we fly uh, from May through October. Okay. And then October is that uh, we call our, our down season. Mm -hmm. um, to keep the volunteers motivated, we've got uh, restoration projects mm -hmm. that we keep hidden uh, during the summer. And then during the winter season, everything's up for grabs and volunteers yeah. can go to work and uh, work on aircraft. Yeah, it's, it's the same in our situation here too. We are all volunteers. And so in the summer, we're all over the place getting footage and in the winter, we put them together, you know. So, uh, uh, like I had mentioned on the clip, there is one commercial flight that goes to Spokane. Mm -hmm. uh, so if uh, it would be nice if we could fly to Seattle, you know. It would be eventually. Um, uh, that it, may because happen. Because the air, the air. Uh, I mean, the freeway is just uh, not good. Yes. But if you have more commercial traffic, would that interfere with what you're doing? Well, no, not really. Um, Everything is coordinated mm -hmm. by air traffic control, and of course, Olympia has its own control tower, mm -hmm. and they are they are the traffic cops on the airport, and mm -hmm. they, they do a great job uh, coordinating uh, our traffic uh, when we are flying with the uh, with the airline. And again, they only fly uh, in and out of the uh, out of the region uh, two or three times a day, mm -hmm. so uh, there is really uh, no course for, for interruption. However, um, if their operation does expand to Seattle, right. or Portland runs, then there may be some. Uh, yeah tangles there, but I don't anticipate any problem. Well, and then on the other side of the street, you have the sheriff helicopters and the search and rescues, oh, and yes. they all... So all connected and all controlled by that control tower. Busy yes. place. Now, on the other side of the airport is a, uh, a one of the Middle Eastern restaurants. That, oh, yes, yeah, uh, Oasis. We, we have one downtown, mm -hmm. and it wasn't until I came to the flight museum did I find out that they had a restaurant. That's right. They've been there for a number of years, about at least three years. Mm -hmm. 
they started downtown Olympia first. They did, yeah, wonderful. And then uh, the terminal wonderful. had a vacancy and they moved in there. Yeah. And I used to go there for, for lunch quite a bit. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, as uh, the commercial airline moved in, that has all become a high security area and cordoned off by the TSA. Yeah, so, so general aviation pilots can no longer fly into the uh, into the restaurant there. They have to park on the other side of the airfield. Well, you have to walk down the runway to go get some food. Well, they have to walk mm -hmm. down the runway, but they have to take the long way around to get there yeah. now. Yeah, that's why they asked about security earlier when you have that many people. And like I said, I don't remember when the war ended, if at all, and so on. Um, well, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, the war against terrorism uh, really will never end. Yeah, it, it, it's just, uh, I, before we, we started the show, I was telling you a friend of mine in Big Springs, Texas, um, they have a base there um, with the hangars and everything, and uh, early in the year she had uh, shown me around, and I didn't feel comfortable airing that, even though it, it was, so, you know, just wonderful, because it, it's real confusing to, yeah, let's talk about that, it's real confusing to us as people. Uh, where am I going with that? Okay, Can you no, take no, it from here? You know, what, I'm trying to find out, what, what is confusing uh, to you? Well, what is confusing is, uh, like, if I take a tour of, of town, okay, okay and, I, and I took pictures of of the airport, driving by to show where your museum is. Oh, now, okay. so where does that put me? So you're with alluding to suspicious activity. Um, That's what it is, yes. isn't it? Um, suspicious yeah, activity. Yeah, right after 9-11, uh, mm -hmm. just a few days after, um, you know, we we're all keeping a vigilant eye on the airport there. Of yeah. course, they closed the whole airport down for two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so we couldn't do any flying. No airplanes yeah. in, no airplanes out of that, yeah. that airport at all. But uh, we did notice, you know, some strange things going on, probably. Yeah. No more unusual than ordinary, but uh, we were paying special attention because it was right yeah. after 9/11, and uh, um, yeah, phone calls were made, and um, the situations were investigated by the federal government. So yeah. uh, we like to think uh, things have become more lax since then. Yeah. Um, we're just becoming uh, more used to the uh, the security situation, yeah. but you know we can't keep our guard down. We just gotta yeah. keep an ever-present eye out there for a suspicious activity now more so than ever, because yeah. we're all starting to you know get used to it and let our guard down. Let our guard down. So the, the safest uh, the safest thing. Um, correct me if I'm wrong here. The safest thing would probably be um, you have videos available, you have books available. If anyone wants to take pictures to check with you to. Get a oh, yeah. or something? Yeah, anybody, you know, you can bring your video camera, bring your camera, take all yeah. the pictures you want. Yeah. Uh, we're not worried about that. Yeah. Is that, but if you're out there taking pictures of, you know, the security fences and the gates and whatnot, the then, yeah. then you're going to yeah. be subject to some uh, scrutinization. <laughs> yeah, but you know, our life has changed. You it know? has. Yeah. yeah, it's just, uh, just, just crazy. And you fly yourself? I am a pilot, yes. You are? I do not fly any of the museum's aircraft solo yet, but I have been asked to go up a few times, and I do have some stick time in some of the museum aircraft, and mm -hmm. it, it's a lot of fun. It's a very unique opportunity. And that's one of the perks for being a volunteer as well. Ah, perks. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. If you're there at the right time, the right moment, and there's a seat available, um, once in a while you'll get asked to fill that seat and go up and fly in something like that, uh, that Mustang mm -hmm. there. Now, you have a, you have a two-seater there? We do. We have a lot uh, and, of two seaters. And the lid, uh, the lid was open. Uh, so, so describe to me what it feels like when you're in a plane like that. You can open the lid while you're flying. <laughs> well, see, our entry in, I think, is that's not the word. Give me another word for or, lid. Or the canopy. Canopy yeah. is a better word. Yeah. But um, the little yellow biplane um, mm -hmm. that you shot in your video is probably one of the most uh, um, enjoyable aircraft. Mm -hmm. You know, to get the real flying experience. Mm -hmm because there is no roof, no canopy. Uh -huh. you're, you're exposed out there in the elements. It's an open uh, cockpit flight is, is something to behold. Mm -hmm. um, it's as close um, to being a bird. Mm -hmm. um, I guess you can be uh, flying a hang glider, but for powered flight, um, that's the airplane you want to ride in. Being in something like this, um, the P-51 um, was built as a fighter. It was never built to uh, carry a passenger. The, ours has been modified mm -hmm. with the passenger seat. Uh, solely for the purpose for the passenger who sits in the back mm -hmm. to, to get the feel and experience the, the acceleration and the maneuverability that these uh, airplanes were built to, uh, to tolerate uh, and, to, and to win the war. Yeah. Now, now next to, um, uh, next to the, um, uh, there is a sign that uh, 
person could take a helicopter rides, is that affiliated or separate? Because it's in the, in the next same building? place in the next building. No, that was uh, on Glacier Jet Center. Mm -hmm. And they're a, they're a FBR training uh, base mm -hmm. where um, pilots can learn to, uh, to fly helicopters and fixed wing aircraft. And they also offer helicopter uh, rides. With the students? Um, you can become a student or somebody right off. No, the you're going to ride with the students? No, I've never ridden with a student. Uh, no. That's why I no. wanted to know, <laughs> yeah. So be, because I did see that sign there. Uh, on a 1 to 10, how many, where am I going with this? Uh, on a 1 to 10, uh, how many of the, um, the people that visit your museum are actually involved in in things of the, the in of coming back and volunteering uh, yeah volunteering okay. or learning something or repeat customers okay well as far as uh, repeat customers I think it's hundred percent uh, we mm -hmm. see them um, more than once mm -hmm. they're all repeat customers uh, they want to take advantage of their membership mm -hmm. so they come by you know every two or three weeks just to see what's new yeah and they also bring their families and their guests um, members are given uh, gift passes so they can give them out to friends yeah. and bring them to the museum. And I'd say about 20-25% uh, of the members are volunteers. Yeah. We see on a regular basis almost every day. So if you'd be nice enough to tell all the pilots if they fly over a crop circle, I like to, I would appreciate a phone call. Well, you bet. Because, you know, we can't see them from the ground. Okay. And uh, did I leave out anything? Uh, we kind of get in touch at the end here. It was just, it, it, I really suggest that everybody, um, not suggest, I would recommend that when you're in the area, you just come by. Yes, and, and you need to and stop by again and uh, take uh, some more video of the, uh, the current setup. Oh, it's really yeah. quite impressive. It's, it's oh, different yes. now, yeah. And we filled a lot of holes that uh, you Did saw you? in the video there. Yeah. yeah. So if you, uh, if I leave, left out anything that you can think of. Well, yes, I'd like to re re reiterate that we are open seven days a week yeah. now from 11 to 5, and uh, general admission is only $5, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it's worth the expense. It's uh, quite the experience, mm -hmm. yeah. especially in the summer, because uh, this is our flying season, and uh, mid, late afternoon, uh, more often than not, we take something up and go flying. Yeah, you do? It's a sight to behold, yes. Oh, girl, yeah. I guess, I guess I'll stop by there. And it's located on the old Old Highway 99, yes, right so, on the airport. So we get to it from, from I-5. Can you take yeah. us to it? On uh, I-5, uh, coming south from Tacoma or Seattle, mm -hmm. it's uh, exit 101. Mm -hmm. It's the air industrial um, exit. I think they're renaming it to Water Boulevard now. Mm -hmm. But we do have signs on the freeway saying Olympic Flight Museum, this mm -hmm. exit. And just take a left turn, head east over the freeway, and we're about uh, two miles down the road mm -hmm. and then off Full Highway 99. Can't miss us. No, it's, yeah, and then if you're, if you're over in the area, give me a call and I'll buy you a cup of coffee. How's that? Sounds good. Yeah. And then, uh, and then the coming the other way, it's it's. Yeah, if you're coming north, it's still exit 101. It's still exit 101. Still exit 101, yes. Yeah. And so. just follow the signs to the museum. They're all over the place. Yeah, we we don't have an exit 100. It's 99 and then 101. Is hmm. that right? I'm not too sure about yeah. that. People have but asked me. Got to make sure that uh, sometimes people confuse it with Highway 101 and take Highway 101 That's off true, of I-5. Yeah. So yeah, we try to stress it's exit 101, exit. not Highway 101. Yeah. So, um, uh, September 27 and 28? Yes. Yeah, okay. so that this will end in time for people to come. Great. And uh, on an average, how long does it take to do your tour? Um, budget at least an hour. At least an yeah, hour. Yeah, for a tour. Yeah. And, Lots uh, to see. Yeah. And it, it, it was great during the winter because it, it's the reason we came. We just didn't know what else to do. The weather was really kind of... Yes, it's, it's yeah. like that here in Washington. Yeah. And so, on a personal, what's next for you? Unknown. I'm right now in a flux period. So well, right now I'm well, concentrating um, on my duties at the museum mm -hmm. and then finish, finishing up my schoolwork. Mm -hmm. And then after I'm done, then I will start looking at other avenues. I don't know. Yeah. I'd like to stay with the museum as, as long as I can. Yeah. Well, you know, some say we, we grow up when we're 52. <laughs> and so what would you like to be when you're 52? <laughs> oh, I don't know. You don't know. Um, I'd like to have an airplane. Yeah. That much I know. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
and uh, let's see, we, we covered everything and it's just wonderful here. What you see behind us here is they bring the children and, and, and everything and it, it's just uh, a lot of people, huh? And, and that, you said that's from last year, huh? Yeah, this is last year's uh, footage. You can see uh, we did have some rain on Sunday. It did, yeah. I'm going to thank you for coming. All right. Thank uh, you for having me. It was fun. Yeah, name the show was Flying High. Uh, make sure you stop in and uh, um, take your dreams right along with you. And we'll see you next week. We're going to take you on the road next week. And um, again, thank you for coming. And, You're welcome. Uh, enjoy the Olympia. The Olympic. Olympic flight music. Flight music. Bye. <laughs> nice shot.